Hi, this is Ben Field at the Art of Fishing in sunny Weybridge in Cornwall. You join me on the eve of what is the 2022 Cornish Lure Festival. And the festival, if you haven't heard about it before, is, is something that we've, we've been doing it for more than a decade now. It's always been a catch and release event where we don't require any, any fish to be weighed or anything like that. It's all, it's all done on fish length. It actually includes three different categories. So we have the, the bass fishing, which is the largest, the largest section where I think we've got about 70 guys out there this weekend. Um, the species hunt, which has always been a really interesting one for us because LRF has always been something that we, we've sort of always had a, had a big investment in uh, and something I enjoy doing. And then the, the third part is our wrasse fishing event. So to start actually with the wrasse fishing event, it's, it's something that always started as a little bit of a, an add-on because the nature of the Cornish coast is very rough and rugged. A lot of the guys that are coming down from all over the country, they've never necessarily fished an area like this before. And bass fishing, to be honest, isn't always the easiest thing. So the wrasse fishing side of things is uh, it's almost like something that gives people an opportunity to catch some fish, record some fish, and, and hopefully win some prizes as a result. It's, it's tricky sometimes with wrasse because being a length competition, the bigger they get, the fatter they get, and they don't necessarily get any longer. So to save uh, the idea, hopefully, of, of anybody tying for prizes. We actually have this year a system in place where we're actually taking the three longest wrasse that they're catching combined. So it's the total length of all those three. So A, it'll give us a chance to, to measure a lot of fish, hopefully. We'll see a lot, of the, a lot of these beautiful fish being caught, all different colors, all different shapes and sizes. Um, and it gives us as much as anything, a, a, an overview of, of, of what's out there and, and where they're being caught. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great addition to the competition. The bass fishing side that I mentioned, first of all, is the largest. It is, again, all catch and release, so it's all done on length rather than weight. Um, it's always been quite an easy thing to do, actually. I, th I know there's a lot of uh, ideas about there about it being a, a difficult type of competition to run, but actually it's always worked really, really well for us. All those worst case scenarios that you could imagine happening actually typically never do, touch wood. Um, but the, fingers crossed, with this this being the year that it is, fishing as well as it is, with the conditions as amazing as they are for this weekend, I think we'll have some, we'll have some great results.
that it does actually work uh, for the festival as a whole even is that the guys who are who have entered already will be here with either with me here tomorrow in the shop or they'll be down at one of the pubs in St Austell and they will basically sign in and we will give them an entrance card along with their goodie bag and things like that that they've all deserved um, and then after that it's pretty much up to them to go fishing wherever they like taking these photos just on digital cameras things like that on their phones um, alongside the tape measure so that when we get to the Sunday which is our, our presentation which is actually happening at the the Royal Cornwall Showground this year up at the Pavilion Centre up there. What they'll do when they get there is basically present us with all their photos, the team that we've got working on the door will record everything and then over the course of the following couple of hours we'll obviously have a, a good idea and a good rundown as actually as to who's caught what and how many fish are out there and it's really good um, almost like a bit of a survey so after this weekend we get a really good shot of, of how bass fishing is is doing these days as to, as to what fish are out there, how big they are how it's not necessarily even just about the biggest fish, we'll have a good idea as to how many, even how many smaller fish are out there and the size brackets and the ages that, are, that the guys are catching. So it's always just a really interesting result, even aside from, from the winners. So it's typically with the bass side, it's the longest fish that wins. So uh, the backups are obviously second, third, fourth, longest, etc. There is actually then a prize, which is a little bit different this year. We've always done an additional one for the person that catches what are the three longest bass combined. A little bit like the ras. In the case of the bass, it just rewards the person who's perhaps most consistent across the course of the weekend. But as the guys that are fishing this weekend will find, this year I've changed a little bit to actually make it so that it's actually the second, third and fourth longest bass combined that will win that sort of consistency backup prize. Taking out that one longest fish just means that the guys that have been genuinely consistent across the course of the weekend with all those decent sized backups will actually be rewarded for their, for their fishing as well. So the third side, which I haven't mentioned yet, is the species hunt, the, the LRF side of things. That one is a little bit different. Typically, it's always been a species hunt, so a really nice, simple format where the guys will go out over the over the 48 hours, catching as many species as they can. Um, and it, having started with sort of five species being caught way back in 2011, the guys now on mid-20s and above, it's gotten to the point where a lot of them now know exactly where some of these different species are so it really benefits the guys that live locally that, that have put the time in um, that in some cases have won numerous past competitions 
But I think even though even those guys now are actually kind of wanting a little bit of a change. So for this year, the species event is it still covers the whole weekend, and there are still bonus points for catching individual additional species. But the the bulk of the event is actually happening on Saturday. So and it's all based in Falmouth, along the along the various harbours and piers and keys in the cent in the cent in the centre of Falmouth. So this time around, though, it's also we've changed it so that it too is a length based competition. So, for example, for every millimeter of fish that is measured, they will get one point. One point. So, what we have there's the stewards in each of the different sections that we have down there. So, when they catch a fish, they'll basically run it very quickly as or as quickly as possible to a steward, who will measure it and record it for them, and then it's very quickly returned, obviously. So, over the course of the event, it'll be really interesting. It's 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 quite in depth the way that it's working with different zone rotations and things like that this year. Um, but it's all it, with all of that. Even it's still a really relaxed, just fun social event, and that's the thing with having it all based in one place on one day, is that all of the guys will be there. So it's it, it's just a lot of fun to, to be fishing there. You can't necessarily do it with with bass or wrasse where you have that social interaction. So it's almost the opposite style of fishing, and it's it's something that I enjoy, and it should so it should should be really good fun to actually get this event up and rolling. There's bonus points then in addition to the length for things like catching the only one of a certain species and the longest of a certain species. So what will actually happen is that I think after the Saturday, the guys themselves that have fished it won't specifically know at that point who has actually won, which will add a little bit of drama, I think, probably to the presentation because with the way that we've worked it with additional bonus points then being earned for species caught outside of the Falmouth event, come the Sunday when they come back and actually show us or uh, the, the proof of their additional species, for their bonus points, it'll still be very much up in the air and, and, and a bit more unknown. Hopefully a much tighter event this year, that's that's the point of what we're doing. So A, it'll be much more sociable, B, it'll be a really interesting and, and tight event where almost anybody I think could win it.
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to coming along to our little event that we've obviously been having for a little while now. Um, I, more than anything, I think the thing about this event as a whole is just how good all of you guys are. Um, because we sort of put it on, admittedly, a little bit reluctantly on some years, but it's always gone really well and we keep on going. And this, this year was a little bit of a fresh start. Um, obviously, it's been a little bit more work, but hopefully the event on the whole has worked out well for a lot of you guys. I know it's fished a bit tough, but that's it obviously comes and goes. Um, we've obviously added a new format to the species side of things, which I think has worked out really, really well. So we'll obviously hear maybe a bit of feedback from the guys later on that. Um, but we are, after all the waiting, for which I'm obviously grateful as well, we're obviously ready to crack on with some prizes. So we've always had the three sections this year. There are obviously the brass, the species, and the bass. Uh, bass, as always, is the main event, so uh, that will be last in line. Um, we will start with the wrasse. I mean, it's always one of those one of those categories where it's just when you when you're not sure how the bass fishing is going to go, it's a it's a great one to add. So we're kind of happy to have it back, really. Um, there have been some numerous bit entered, which is great, um, and we obviously have a top three. So I will do those in reverse order. Um, Josh over here has the prizes, um, so hopefully he's ready to go. But in third place on the wrasse side, the total length with 116 centimetres, that's the top three fish combined. Uh, 116 centimetres, Emmanuel Brunner. <laughs> Second place, um, not too far ahead. It's been a pretty close one to be fair. That's always where with the rats and exactly why we do three fish combined to, to give us some slightly wider margins, hopefully. So second, second place with 126 centimetres combined is Charlie Pearson. <laughs> and the winner of the Cornish Lure Festival 2022 Rass section is Tommy Bryce. Well done, Tommy. Five centimetres combined for his biggest three fish, that is good going. He wins himself a lovely tail with rod, which is one of my favourites. The species section, like I say, this has been a really new one this year, and a lot of the changes we've made have been, they've, they've messed with the format entirely, they've been something totally new. Um, a lot of the bass guys might not be familiar with, with what we've done in the past even, but it was gone from being what was a very simple species event, where it was a really simple count of how many, how many species you want, and obviously the most would win. This year it's become length based and bon there's bonus points and it's, it's all on points basically. So the numbers you'll hear are pretty pretty high because there were a lot of fish caught. Um, but what I'll do in reverse order, in fact actually I'll go back a step because the way that we've done it, there was a Falmouth section and a Falmouth day that we all fished yesterday. Um, which with the lovely weather and everything like that, I, th I think went really, really well. So I hope, I hope some of the guys that are here will agree. Um, but what we've done to spread the prizes around a little bit, um, and now with this points based section, the category, category it, it enables us to really split different prizes for different um, levels of achievement. So one of the things that we did during, during the day yesterday, we split the town of Falmouth into what were actually four different zones. So during the course of the day, the guys also were split actually into three different groups. And it's a little bit complicated to explain the whole thing now, but through the course of the day, we rotated through the different sections and so every angler fished every section and then an extra one at the end, which we did on a big social sort of thing, so everybody was there. Um, but what we did with those groups, we knew that there was the potential all along with this type of competition that one of those groups, if you were drawn into a certain group of anglers fishing a certain rotation of sections, there was always a possibility that it was going to benefit you. Um, it worked out that actually it was incredibly fair, so that really wasn't a, a concern that we almost needed to have. But it meant that the groups of anglers, because there was this possibility of a little bit of um, fluctuation in the, in the number of fish in each different zones as they rotated, what we've done is, is actually award a prize to the person that was drawn into each group as they went about their rotation. So they were fishing for this prize, a smaller prize admittedly, but they were fishing for this prize just against the anglers who they spent the day fishing with, basically. So we had what we've actually called, the stranger sounds to have missed out A, we actually have B, C, and D groups. So I'll start uh, with group D actually, and the winner of that group was actually Richard Salter with what was 5,328 points. 
then we moved down to C, C the group, group C, um, which, like I say, this I think was probably the hardest rotation, to be fair. Um, uh, just looking at the numbers on the sheets and the, the, so the species that were caught in the groups, and it, we, we all found when we were there, as, as the day progressed, it did get more difficult in certain ways. So the winner of what was Group C, with, with what was 3,685 points, was Lee Russell. And then what we've done actually with the last of the three, the three groups, um, there was always going to be an additional prize for the person that, um, there was always a prize for the person that won any group, but then there's also, the, there was clearly going to be one person that not only won their group, but actually won the day as well. Um, so the overall winner of yesterday's Falmouth event and the winner of Group B was Andy Mitten with 8,131 points. Like I said, we have numerous uh, prizes almost for the species side this year because it's so varied. Um, the other great thing, which I think probably everybody here would, would be most impressed with and, and happy to see the guys involved, is that we actually had three, three juniors fishing yesterday with us as well. Um, which is just a brilliant to see. I think they've all had an amazing time. Um, we've enjoyed actually, I just think, having them there. Um, so the in second position on the junior side was Tom Locke with 1,526 points. It was great to see Tom actually doing so well because, to be fair, he never even really done this style of fishing until yesterday. So uh, incredible, really. So the winner of what was the junior category for the species section this year was Owen Russell, who <laughs> The other thing with uh, the way this point system has worked this year is that there was always going to be an additional part of the weekend as well. The Cornish Lure Festival has always been a two-day event, and by adding this different um, one-day event to the species side of things, we didn't want to write off the rest of the competition entirely. So. There were additional points for the numerous species that they were catching outside of the Falmouth event. So for the person that caught the most species outside of Falmouth, there is this additional prize, and that one goes to Matt Barnsley, who caught 17 additional species on top of what he caught yesterday. <laughs> Which leaves us with our actual top three species hunters over the rest of the weekend. So. These guys have gone for it. They've been really, really close all along. They have changed and rotated positions as we've gone through the course of not only yesterday, but the rest of the weekend as well. With the way that the points have worked, I think it's gone actually very well. Um, but I'll start with third place overall um, with a massive score of what is 9,859 points is Lucas Ithio Charities. <laughs> Second overall on our species hunt. The nice thing about this, I should say, is that actually these guys don't even know who's won yet. So it really is, right now is when they're first hearing about who's actually won. Um, the two that are left will know who they are. They've been really close all along, closer than they even know, with me being privy to the, to the point sheets. Um, but in second place this weekend, um, with a total of 9,881 points, is Andy Mitten. <laughs> Which leaves only one man, who is the legend of LRF species competitions. I think everybody would agree. Um, he has come back massively over the last couple of zones of what was yesterday, and then with his additional species tally, which I know he actually caught almost entirely on Friday. So uh, he's hammered it early on. It's been added on today to really bulk up his score. So overall champion with 11,128 points is Will Pender. <laughs> Which leaves what is the main event. I know most of you guys are actually here for the bass, so I know we've had what on paper were just probably the best conditions we've ever had for a, for a bass fishing competition. I know it's not been easy for everybody. It's been actually pretty rough from what I've heard. Um, difficult for some. Um, the happy fish caught was obviously always nice. Uh, we never know what's going to be caught, and, and I've probably said to loads of the guys over the weekend in the last few months, it obviously does just need one fish to uh, to somewhere to come out of the bag somewhere along the way. So this year, this year actually, we did do our again. We have different categories as always, 
We have the best visitor, what is the best backup series of fish, which this year I changed from being a combined length of not the first, second and third fish, but actually celebrating the guy who catches the longest second, third and fourth fish combined. Then being the more sort of the, the follow on sort of to show a little bit of consistency. So the person this year with the longest length of backup fish with 151 centimetres was Anthony Theobald. The best visitor of those that will appear not in the top results, so they might be able to predict who some of themselves are in, uh, in advance, but the best visitor, one of those anglers who doesn't live in either Devon or Cornwall, the winner with a fish of 55 centimetres was Reese Hunt. <laughs> Which leaves the top three. Um, I say always really hardly four. You never know what's going to happen. It's different people typically every year. Um, but in third place overall, with a fish of what is it, 63 centimetres, which has been decided on a, a second fish backup to split, I think, two or three places even overall, um, is Sean Jukes. In second place, we've actually seen this guy already. I've known him for years and years and years, and it is great to see him up here. But it's Charlie Pearson with a fish of 68 centimetres. This year, gratefully, it wasn't too close at the top, um, but it's always good to see a fish over 70. There was only one. The winner with a fish of 73 centimetres was Johnny Jones. <laughs> Which, like I say again, really just rounds me up to say thank yous to everybody. Um, there's actually a lot of people this year. I think probably even, I think my mum is back. She is actually one person I need to thank hugely. We do have the raffle, which we are going to crack on with in a minute. Uh, there's loads of really good stuff for that one. Josh is going to do his best to dig some of that out ASAP. Um, but well, after that, we've got a few minutes because, like I say, there's a lot of thank yous for me to make. One of them, like I said before, is to my mum, of all people. Uh, for helping us out, not only with sort of helping out with the venue, but sorting out the food, helping out behind the scenes with the raffle bits and pieces. Uh, but she's been brilliant this weekend. Um, there's also this <laughs> There's also from, well, from just every day of the week, there is Mr. Josh Fletcher over there. <laughs> because he's, uh, he's obviously been a bit of a rock during the last month, really. So uh, thank you very much to him. <laughs> Also, the guys who were obviously looking after the fish for us today, the photos, uh, Charlie and, and Will, I think John helped out a little bit as well. Uh, so thank you to those guys. Also, sorry. Also, for the species side specifically, what we did yesterday, because of this new format, we had a, a group of volunteers who were actually helping us out as stewards. So we had the likes of Ben Trigoning from Sakura, we had Ben Bassett from the, from the Big Love crew, we had, uh, Josh was obviously there, who else was there? Max. Matt Newcomb. Newcomb was there. Um, we pulled out a few of the old dogs to, to help us out. Um, and I think, like I say, I think they all had a good time as well, to be fair. So, I'm not saying massive thanks from me to them. Okay. It's always been a little bit of a different one as well, just because we've had TV cameras, we've had guys here with, cam with pictures and videos all over the place. So, this year, like I say, the point from my side is that I appreciate the fact that for some of you guys, I know we were caught up an hour actually leaving Weybridge even, so my thanks to all of you just for that patience at the time. It's the idea being that it's obviously just going to help me out more than anybody in the future so that we can hopefully try for next year to, to make this one bigger bigger than it's ever been before. I think this year is a pretty good one to be fair, but I think next year will be a, a really good one to watch out for. So so fingers crossed we'll, uh, we'll get there and I won't have some sort of nervous breakdown in the meantime. <laughs> it's probably going to happen, so I don't, can't, can't write anything off at the moment. But uh, it'll be all right. So, like I say, again, but thank you more than anything just for all you guys for, for coming, that have supported us all along, um, that have got there in there with your tickets in advance, etc., etc. I know sometimes it's a big ask when you don't know what the weather's like, the tides are like, everything else like that. Um, so, again, just thanks from me to all of you for, for being here and, and for rocking up even today because 
when you're not catching fish, which I know some of you have struggled, just to be back today is, uh, is, a, is a massive thing, Maya. So, uh, so thanks to everybody again. So with that being the case, I think... Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Yeah, like a tear in my eye. <laughs> no, thank you everybody. But I hope you have a good trip back to wherever you come from. Um, like I said, we'll definitely see you next year, hopefully. And um, any problems, let me know, obviously. But um, yeah, like I say, see you all next year, hopefully. Thank you very much. Yeah.